Hello and welcome to another tutorial in this Stable Diffusion for Professional Creative series. Today we'll be looking at ways to generate a lot of images for mood boards. Mood boards are essential in a lot of creative professions and I've seen a ton of apps that promise to let you create reference images with generative AI. Most of these apps though are kind of proprietary or are behind a subscription model. What I want to show you is that you can use Stable Diffusion to generate the same images, if not better. As always, you will be able to find the workflow in the description below, as well as any models you might need. Remember that if you're missing custom nodes when you're importing the workflow, you can just install them using the ConfUI Manager extension. If you don't know what the manager is or you don't have it installed, you can go back to my first lesson where I will show you how to install it. This is the core of what we'll be using today. It's a simple workflow, you can see the model here, the clip text encode for positive and negative prompt, a case sampler, an empty latent image, and a VAE decode and preview image. And all of this at the top is just an IP adapter. An IP adapter is basically something that tells the model how we want the generated images to look like. It can influence a lot of different things. Today, we're gonna to try and influence style and reference. It's a similar process to working with image to image rather than text to image. But instead of encoding an image into a latent and then working on that latent, we are basically asking the model to go through images and apply those references to the final image. Same as always, we go through all the steps of building the workflow and we'll be seeing three different real life use cases. We'll be generating poses for photo shoots, generating reference images for creative directors to use in their mood boards, and generating random ideas for the brainstorming stage in logo and graphic design. So without further ado, let's clear the board and start again from scratch. The first thing we're gonna need is a load checkpoint node. So we're gonna check for that and add it. For this workflow, we're gonna use Stable Diffusion Excel instead of the usual 1.5, just to spice things up a little. So for this one, I'm gonna use Adverse Excel, which is a new model that I quite like. Starting from this node, we're gonna drag and drop from model and add a case sampler. As I said before, we're not gonna encode an image so we can load up an empty latent image. Let's do that by dragging and dropping from the latent image input and applying an empty latent image. Now what we wanna do is go to the clip, output, select clip text and code, Ctrl C, Ctrl V, and double it. The top one will be our positive field, and the bottom one will be our negative field. Link up the clip, and link up the conditioning output to the positive and negative inputs. The next thing we're gonna need is a VAE decode for the latent. So let's look for that, and we'll hook up the VAE from the model into the VAE decode node, and then from there, we'll just drag and drop from image and add a preview image node. This is the core of a lot of our workflows. And in its most basic form, it's the core of basically all of the workflows in ConfUI. So what we need now is a way to apply the IP adapter. We're gonna search for IP adapter and we're gonna load up the apply IP adapter node in this node we can see that there's a lot of different inputs. An IP adapter input, a clip vision input, an image input, a model input, and an intention mask input. What we need, first of all, is an IP adapter model. So drag and drop from there and select the IP adapter model loader. Then we need a clip vision model. Clip vision is what lets stable diffusion see an image basically. So we're gonna load a model and we'll check for the clip vision model loader. A quick note on this. IP adapter works in such a way that for different IP adapter models, a different load clip vision model is needed. You will see in the shared workflow that I left a note there to guide you through the process of selecting the correct IP adapter model with the correct clip vision model. Since we're using an SDXL model, we'll have to use a corresponding IP adapter model for SDXL. In our case, that's IP adapter plus SDXL vith.savetensor. vith basically says that 
the model for clip vision that we want to use is a VTH model. So we're going to look for a VTH model. And that's the PyTorch model, VTH.p. The next thing we need is an image. And that is one reference image that we like and we want to use throughout the building process of adding new images to our mood boards. So we're going to search for a load image node. We're going to choose an image and then we're going to link it up. Now you can see that the only thing that we need is the model and the attention mask. We're not going to need an attention mask because we're not going to apply the IP adapter only to a certain part of the image. We want the IP adapter to be applied to the whole image. So that field can be left empty. The model though is necessary. So we'll hook up that from the load checkpoint node and from the apply IP adapter node on to the case sampler. And our structure is basically complete. If we want to have only one reference image, that is. If we want to have more, we just need to duplicate the apply IP adapter node and let the model go through that as well. The only thing we need is to hook up the IP adapter model as well and the clip vision model. And we're going to need another image. So we're going to select another reference image that we like and hook it up to the second apply IP adapter node. And that's basically it. That's the whole setup. As you can see, the model starts from the load checkpoint, goes through the first IP adapter, and then the second IP adapter, and then the case sampler, and gets decoded. Now, first of all, we want to check out what all these different values in the apply IP adapter node mean. So let's start with weight. Weight is how much the reference image is going to weigh on the actual generation. Since we're using two different images, we don't want that to be one. We want that to be way lower than that. We have to choose between the two images which one will be the most important one, both reference-wise and composition-wise, for the final generation. And then we'll set up a number. Let's say start with 0.5 for weight for the first one and 0.3 for the second one. Noise, on the other hand, is a value that kind of randomizes the input. Think of noise as a way to not have the same exact reference image in the final generated image. So we want a bit of noise because we're generating a mood board. So let's put 0.1 there and let's say 0.2 over here. Weight type is not something that you have to be overly concerned about. It's just three different modes of applying the IP adapter. We'll leave that at original. Start at and end at are two variables that go from 0 to 1 that tell our case sampler when we want to start applying the IP adapter. In our case, we'll start from 0 and go to 1 in both our apply IP adapter nodes. The next thing we need is a few prompts. So for negative prompts, we'll do the usual horror, illustration, 3D, render, not safe for work since this is YouTube. And then for positive prompt, we go with fashion photography of a young girl wearing Miu Miu, which is an Italian brand. And then empty latent image for the sizing, as the Excel works best at 1024 by 1024. So we'll input those. And then for the case sampler, we should always try to look at the best settings for each model we want to use. For this one, we'll go with CFG6, sampler name DPMPP2M, and scheduler Caras. And we'll leave this noise at 1, since this is technically a text-to-image generation. Everything's basically ready. So let's launch a generation and see what happens. We can see that now everything is going through the apply IP adapter and then goes back here through the case sampler and it's generating. And that's it. Basically, we got a crown of flowers like in the first picture. We got the neck piece, we got the dress, but the dress is slightly different and influenced from the second dress and the setting is clearly influenced from the second reference picture. This is our first reference image. We started from one reference image for the kind of mood we want and the second reference image for the setting. 
and we can keep on generating more and more, either by hitting Q prompt repeatedly or by changing our batch size to, let's say, 4. So let's try that. And we got another one. Instead of having the background from the second reference picture, this one's got the background from the first picture. As you can see, the process picks a few things from one and the other picture and then merges them together in a new reference image. Scrolling through all the pictures, we can see that some of them are shot in a studio and some of them are shot outside. Now, all the pictures kind of look the same except for the background. So, what we can do is tinker around with the weights. So, let's lower this first one to 0.3 and let's up this one to 0.5 and let's see what happens then. We can see now that the results are much more similar to the second image. All of the pictures are shot in the woods and the outfit is much more resembling the one from the second image. So, if I were to put together a mood board of sorts for inspiration, general mood or the kind of fashion that I would like to use in a photo shoot, this is what I would use. But what if I wanted to generate different poses? Well, let's go back to the drawing board. Well, this time I'm gonna influence the starting point for both IP adapter nodes. The first one will be starting at 0.3, while the second one will be starting at 0.4. And I'm also changing the positive prompt to give the generated image a setting, in this case, on a white backdrop. So what this is now doing is basically starting to generate a blank image and then at 0.3 it's saying, oh wait, I have to apply the API adapter. And at 0.4 it's saying, oh wait, I have to apply this IP adapter as well. This way the workflow has much more freedom in the starting phases and can try different poses that wouldn't be possible if the IP adapter nodes started at 0. As we can see, the generated images now have all different poses and angles. The drawback, though, is that the images have no longer the same kind of fashion as the ones in the reference images. That's acceptable, though, because we're trying to generate new poses rather than stick to the actual fashion. As you may well know, different parts of the mood board relate to different things in a shoot or in the creative process. So, for the first one, we wanted to focus on the actual fashion, on the actual mood, on the actual kind of pictures we want to take. And for the second part, this one, we wanted to focus more on angles and poses. Mind you, the lookbook in this case would still look coherent, and that's a big plus for me, because I'm used to mood boards that are not coherent between poses and reference images for mood and reference images for fashion. So what I would be doing normally is put all these different images together in my head and try to make sense of it. In this way, we can actually have some sort of resemblance between all the different aspects of a mood board. And again, if we want to tinker around with the settings from the IP adapters, let's say we want to have this one start at 0.5 and this one start way later, let's say 0.7, we can try and do that and see what happens. Really, there's basically no constraints in what we can do. We can just try and try and try until we get what we want. And as you can see, since we're starting way later now, the fashion is going to be completely different. But still, there's kind of a sub-theme to it that kind of ties in together with the first pictures. So why am I using this workflow rather than going on Pinterest and finding new related images that I like? Well, one of the first things that came to my mind when Generative AI was first released to the wider public was that we are no longer bound by the real. Normally, in creative workflows, what we want to do is look at different reference images that already exist in order to find our own vision. Now what we can do with Generative AI is actually go look for our vision. And that vision can be created and transposed into a mood board that we can use, both in terms of pre-production and on production. I honestly think that's a big plus for production environments, because I can bring my own vision to the shoot even before I am actually shooting. I'm not bound by already existing images, I can actually now generate my own images that resonate with me, instead of saying this picture, but with that kind of lighting, but with that kind of model, but with that kind of fashion. I can mix them all together and bring my vision to life, even before actually shooting. Now, for our last use case, we're going to start from a simple logo and the general image for mood and we can try and mix together in order to create brainstorming ideas for graphic design and logo design that then we can use in pre-production environments. These images are not going to be obviously any final design, but they can help us in trying to brainstorm new ideas for clients. 
So the first thing we're going to do is select two images, one for the actual logo and one for the aesthetics we're going for. For settings, we're going to use weight 0.4 on the first one, noise will be staying at 0.1, and start is going to be at 0. The second one will be weight at 0.3, noise at 0.2, and start at 0. And for this example, we'll be leaving the clip text encode positive prompt field empty. That's because we just want to brainstorm ideas. We don't want to influence their results, at least not any more than the two reference images are already doing. The only other thing that we're going to do is fix the negative prompt, and we'll remove illustration from it. What we can do now is just queue the prompt and see what happens. Now keep in mind that the results won't be any good, at least as far as logo design goes or graphic design goes. What we're trying to achieve is different ideas and lateral thinking, much in the same way that a mood board does. And this is what we got from the first batch. As you can see, we got some ideas that are really close to the first reference image, but with some elements from the aesthetics reference image. Browsing through them, we can see that sometimes the logo changes more, sometimes the logo changes less. But what this does for us is gives us a new way of actually interpreting what we are looking at. Up till now, this could be done in your mind's eye, but what we can achieve now is a lot of different new ideas generated in a matter of seconds. As in the previous use cases, we can just tinker around with the settings and see what happens. So, Let's try bringing this way down to 0.3 and upping this one to 0.5. And now the aesthetics should be much more relevant to the generate image rather than the actual logo. And there we go. These are all examples of what happens if the aesthetics reference is much more important than the logo one. We can see that we got a lot more graphic design appeal to the resulting images rather than a logo appeal to them. So depending on what we actually want to achieve, this might be good for us or this might not be good for us. But still, it gives us possibilities. And possibilities are all that matters in the brainstorming phase and the pre-production phase. So all in all, I think this is a very powerful workflow to stimulate lateral thinking in pre-production environments and brainstorming phases of the creative process. For me, it took around seven seconds to generate each new image it would have actually taken much longer to find reference images on the web. And those images wouldn't have necessarily been exactly what I was looking for. So this will be all for this week. I have seen that a lot of you have left comments either for asking more questions or for asking for help and I'm always happy to help. So if there's something you don't understand or want some help with, just leave a comment and I'll be happy to help you. Also, this is a new channel, so any like and subscribe I get does help a lot. I hope that you have found this useful and you can implement it in your workflows. I am Andrea Bayoni, you can find me on Instagram at Rizunobushi or on the web at andreabayoni.com. If you want to know more about Stable Diffusion and Comfy UI, you can check out these videos. And as always, see you next time.